Hello everybody, today in this session we are going to learn about osteopetrosis. In osteopetrosis there is defective osteoclastic activity. Now we know that our bone is under constant turnover which means old bones are getting destroyed and in place of those new bones are getting formed. It is the osteoclast cells that are destroying the old bones and the osteoblast cells are forming new bones. Now in osteopetrosis there is defective osteoclastic activity which means the osteoclast cells cannot function so it's only the osteoblast cells that's functioning so there will be only deposition of the bones so the osteoblastic activity will be much higher than the osteoclastic activity in the osteopetrosis so there will be more bone deposition which will result into increased bone density. Osteopetrosis is of two types autosomal recessive form and autosomal dominant form. In autosomal recessive form, it's the most severe form and it usually presents in infancy and it's also called infantile form. Now, one very important thing to remember here is that in autosomal recessive form, there is mutations in the carbonic anhydrase type 2 gene. So, how does this mutation affect the bone? Now, here I'm drawing the osteoclast cells, okay? So the osteoclast cells, in order to destroy the bone cells, they require acidic environment. And how do they get this acidic environment from? It's from the enzyme called carbonic anhydrase that's present within them, okay? This carbonic anhydrase enzyme will combine water and carbon dioxide and it will form carbonic acid H2CO3. This carbonic acid will dissociate into H plus, that's proton, and HCO3 or bicarbonate. And this proton will come out of the cell and it will create that acidic environment which is required for the destruction of the bone cells. So when there is mutation in the carbonic anhydrase type 2 gene, the enzyme carbonic anhydrase cannot function and so on, the protons are not formed and there will be no acidic environment and hence the osteoclast cells cannot function and this will all result into osteopetrosis. And this enzyme, the carbonic anhydrase, they are also present in the renal tubular cells and when there is defect in these enzymes, the tubular cells cannot secrete proton so the protons will get collected and they will cause acidosis and this is known as renal tubular acidosis. The next form is the autosomal dominant form which is also known as albers sonberg disease and it usually presents in adults or adolescents. And in this form there is mutation in chloride channel 7 gene. This gene encodes a protein that is present on the surface of the osteoclast cells. The function of this protein is to pump out protons from the osteoclast so it's a proton pump and that is encoded by this gene so when there is mutation in this gene proton pump is not encoded or it cannot function hence the protons cannot be pumped out of the osteoclast cells but this form of disease is a milder form and it usually is asymptomatic and it is mistakenly detected when doing x-ray for other diseases now you might be thinking in osteopetrosis there is high bone deposition so the bones might grow stronger but that's not the case here the bones are actually prone to fracture and it's due to the disorganized pattern of bone deposition the pattern the architecture that's required to maintain the strength of the bone is deranged okay so the bones are prone to fracture due to disordered architecture and since more bones are getting deposited, the bone will lose its flexibility and this will make it more prone to fracture. Due to excess bone deposition in the osteopetrosis, these excess bones sometimes might deposit inside the medullary cavity. The medullary cavity is the cavity that's present within the diaphysis or the shaft of the bone and this cavity contains bone marrow. So when excess bones deposit in this medullary cavity, the, there will be loss of the bone marrow. And when there is loss of bone marrow, we know what bone marrow do, right? They do hematopoietic activity. 
So when there is loss of bone marrow, the hematopoietic activity is affected and this can result into pancytopenia. So there is defective production of the blood cells. So when there is decreased production of the red blood cells, the patient might present with symptoms of anemia such as weakness, fatigue, pallor. When there is defective production of the platelets, there might be symptoms of thrombocytopenia and the patient might present with bruising and hemorrhage. And when there is defective production of the leukopenia, there might be recurrent infections. And since the hematopoietic activity of the bone marrow is lost, this activity is taken over by other organs such as liver and spleen. So the liver and spleen will start producing bone, uh, blood cells now. And this is known as extramedullary hematopoiesis. And since the activity of the liver and the spleen is increased, there will be enlarged liver and spleen or you can also call it as hepatosplenomegaly. There can also be excess bone deposition in the skull as well. Now we know that in the skull there are these small foramens or the canals through which different types of nerves and the blood vessels they pass through. And when there is deposition of the bones in these foramens, so the foramens will get narrowed and they might compress the blood vessels or the nerves that are passing through it and especially there will be cranial nerve compression and this might result into various symptoms such as vision loss when the nerves supplying the eyes are affected, deafness when there is compression of the nerves supplying the ear and facial paralysis when the nerves supplying the um, facial muscles are affected. The patient might also present with hydrocephalus so when there is bone deposition in the foramen magnum now this is the foramen through which the spinal cord comes out of the cranial cavity so when there is bone deposition in this height in the foramen magnum uh, csf will get collected inside the cranial cavity and that can result into hydrocephalus the patient with osteopetrosis might also present with hypercalcemia due to Cal uh, excess calcium being deposited into the bones and hence we can give calcium supplementation as therapy. Now in this slide I have compared two x-rays. On my left side this is a normal x-ray of the pelvic bone and on the side this is an x-ray of osteopetrosis. And you can notice here the bones are way too bright and it's due to excess bone deposition and sometimes this is also termed as bone within bone appearance. Now under the management section, osteopetrosis are usually treated with bone marrow transplant and it's done for infantile form. Now you might be wondering why bone marrow transplant for osteopetrosis. Now remember that in osteopetrosis there is defect in the activity of the osteoclast cells and these osteoclast cells are none other than macrophages and the macrophages are derived from the monocytes right and these monocytes they come from the bone marrow and now so we can say that it is the bone marrow that are actually producing these defective osteoclast cells so when we replace these bone marrows then we will be replacing the sick osteoclast cells with the new ones so that they can function properly and in that way we can tackle osteopetrosis Thank you.